Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, human activity has driven annual greenhouse gas emissions higher by nearly 30,000 percent. The main force behind this increase is the burning of fossil fuels, such as coal and oil, to produce electricity, fuel our vehicles, and heat our homes. In 1750, CO2 emissions were 11 megatons and had reached 4,200 megatons by the end of World War II. Unprecedented economic prosperity in the wake of the World Wars had pushed CO2 emissions to 22,500 megatons by 1990. Over the past two decades, accelerated economic growth in developing countries and limited emissions abatement in developed economies pushed CO2 emissions to nearly 32,000 megatons by 2009. Though it's widely known that greenhouse gas emissions lead to dramatic and widespread temperature changes around the globe, there are other destabilizing effects that can prove devastating for Earth's climate. Weather patterns are changing, leading to extreme weather events such as tornadoes and droughts. Higher temperatures in polar regions are causing the melting of ice while causing the death of rainforests in the tropics. Carbon dioxide absorbed by the oceans is leading to their acidification, threatening marine life and destroying coral reefs. All these changes are threatening animal species around the globe, with extinction at least two to three orders of magnitude higher than the typical rate. There is arguably no greater threat posed to the globe in this century than that of climate change. While rising to the challenge seems daunting, addressing climate change while maintaining sustainable economic growth is possible. Information and Communications Technology, or ICT, provides such an opportunity. In the Global E-Sustainability Initiatives, or GESI's Smarter 2020 report, Six economic end-use sectors have been identified where ICT can be used to abate GHGs. The abatement opportunities identified represent 9.1 gigaton CO2 equivalent of GHG abatement by 2020, which is just under 17% of the projected emissions in that year. Not only will these emissions reductions confer environmental benefits through GHG abatement, but will also yield huge economic savings. Preventing the release of 9.1 gigaton CO2 equivalent is the equivalent to reducing emissions from oil combustion by 21.6 million barrels of oil, which is enough oil to fill 106 million tanker trucks. The monetary savings from that level of energy savings is astounding. At November 2012 oil prices, saving that much oil would save the equivalent of 1.9 trillion U.S. dollars per year. That's equivalent to the annual economic output of Russia. The end use sectors we've identified are as follows, agriculture and land use, buildings, manufacturing, power, service and consumer, and transportation. To give a couple examples, within the agriculture and land use sector, ICT can abate emissions by reducing crop failure and wastage of fertilizer and water through smart farming. In the manufacturing sector, mechanizing industrial processes and coordinating them through ICT will reduce factory inefficiencies and emissions. And in the power sector, ICT can more efficiently integrate renewable energy sources into the power supply, reducing reliance on electricity generated from highly polluting fossil fuels. The 35 identified sublevers offer significant potential for abatement by 2020. In the power sector, the sublevers offer 2 gigaton CO2 equivalent of abatement. In transportation, 1.9 gigaton CO2 equivalent of abatement has been identified. 1.2 gigatons of abatement in the manufacturing sector. 0.7 gigatons in consumer and service. 1.6 gigatons in agriculture. And another 1.6 gigatons in the building sector. All told, the technologies identified offer up to 9.1 gigaton CO2 equivalent of abatement by 2020, which represents an emissions reduction of about 17% when compared to the business-as-usual case for emissions in that year. Nevertheless, it's important to remember that ICT also contributes to GHG emissions and that these emissions are also growing. As ICT has proliferated around the globe, emissions have grown substantially. Despite increases in energy efficiency, direct emissions from ICT increased from about half a gigaton CO2 equivalent to nine-tenths of a gigaton CO2 equivalent between 2002 in 2011, as more people will begin to use ICT and usage from existing users grow substantially. By 2020, emissions are expected to increase another 40% from 2011 as these trends continue. It is important, however, to keep these emissions in perspective. The abatement potential of ICT at 9.1 gigaton CO2 equivalent in 2020 is over seven times the size of its direct emissions. 
But adoption of all these sublevers won't happen on its own, meaning there's an important role for policymakers to play in driving the uptake of GHG abatement technologies. Local and national policies directed at each of the sublevers, based on a coherent global policy framework, will be critical to ensuring that the decisions of individuals and businesses change in such a way to prioritize the reduction of GHG emissions. It's clear that ICT is to play an integral role in reducing GHG emissions and addressing what could be the most critical challenge humanity faces in the 21st century. To become part of the solution and learn more about ICT-enabled GHG abatement, please visit www.jesse.org.